fucking Mike Lindell tries to show for Frank's speech. I tried to diagram his sentence here. I wound up with the Mandelbrot set. It was really fucking weird. <laughs> yeah. Although we do get his lawyer's first diving on the hard cut <laughs> button here. He goes, on the other social media platforms... You talk about the vaccine, you almost get arrested. Blackout. Yeah, he starts to say another <laughs> word and everything blacks the fuck out. We come back and he's got a black eye. <laughs> <laughs> God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because they refuse to watch us for a change. I'm your host, New Illusions, and sitting 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend, Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Hello, Noah. I'm not... <laughs> I'm not... I'm Keith. This is Keith. I'm different than... It's just not Heath. Hello, Keith. It's me, Eli Balls. Oh, shit. We're talking at the same time. It's me, <laughs> Eli Kolosnik. <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get there. And, of course, sitting 900 miles to my northeast, I'm the one supposed to introduce you, bro, is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? I'm amazing, Noah. It only gets better. The deeper we go into Mike Lindell's Ooh. canon, the stronger and better it gets. And we're yeah. all about to get sued for $1.6 billion <laughs> because we stopped covering our voices. Andrew will be so happy. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, there's been a bit of a change of plans based on uh, like what we said at the end of last week's episode. So tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? We watched Absolute Interference, the sequel, the sequel. <laughs> To Mike Lindell's Absolute Proof. It has a sequel. Yep. It's a, again about Biden stealing the election more. It's the story of exact quote multiple times in this movie. It's the story of Absolute Proof times two. <laughs> double absolute. Ab un plus ungood. Double plus ungood where, the movie. Like he, he clearly thought that was going to be the title. Right? Yes. He might as well have gotten a cootie shot on air <laughs> in the middle of this fucking movie. <laughs> and Eli, how bad was this docu movie? <laughs> well, if you love being lied to by a toddler, but you wish he had backup from trustworthy figures like the Hamburglar, Swiper, and those kids <laughs> trying to steal the Lucky Charms, <laughs> you will love this movie. It's a uh, absolute proof of treason. Yeah. Yeah, and defamation, too. I mean, it's, he kept saying, like, when we get to the courts, and I'm like, oh, it'll wind up in a court. Oh, it can't be treason if you don't know who I'm talking about. Yeah, right. It could be somebody else. Exactly. I brought Taco Bell, so you have to let Amy Comey Barrett rule in this. Term. No? Okay. Damn it. All right. Supreme. So is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best of being the worst? Best worst voice modulator. Oh, my God. Best worst voice modulator. <laughs> I okay. Oh. We're gonna get there. We'll explain it when we get there. But I was literally weeping Me with too. laughter Me too. Me too. at yep. how badly they managed to use a voice modulator on multiple guests that they're trying to hide. It mm -hmm. may have been the funniest thing we've ever seen. It's up it there. Was hilarious. This is a funny hilarious comedy movie that doesn't know it. So the, I would say up until now, the funniest thing that we've ever seen in terms of just bad filmmaking was remember we watched that one movie where the credits were rolling as they did the Breakfast Club close? Yeah. You know, and the, and the, <laughs> you couldn't read what it said because the credits were rolling over time. That to me was the funniest <laughs> moment we'd ever achieved. I think the voice modulator shit in this movie is even better. So. The Breakfast yeah. Club close might as well have been like, I'm just somebody else who <laughs> had something that happened to me later. I'm not not me. <laughs> so, and I was going to go with the best worst confirmation. All right. So we keep building up that he's got even better evidence than last movie. The last movie's evidence was just a spreadsheet that he never sourced. Right. The gotcha moment in this movie is even fucking worse. It's that unsourced data being verified in unexplained ways by a confidential expert whose identity has been hidden. <laughs> okay. I mean, maybe if there had been a very clearly screenshotted PDF of a certificate he might have, I'd be convinced. 
You know how sometimes the New England Journal of Medicine is blurred out and in a different voice? <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. That's that's when it's at its best, really. <laughs> that's when it can really tell you what how it that's really That's how you know feels. it's real. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, when it's when, talking from the heart. When they post on frankspeech.com their peer-reviewed <laughs> science. Yeah. And, of course, I'm going to go with best worst guest to be talking about foreign interference in our elections <laughs> that isn't Vladimir Putin. Right, Literally yes. <laughs> only Vladimir Putin would have been a better first guess in this movie for, hi, I'd like to talk to you about the problem of other countries interfering in our elections. Yeah. Okay, honestly, it's debatable, though. It is the really. We're talking about. It's debatable between this person and Putin. Really, because he's Russian. Yeah. <laughs> right, exactly. For him, at least it would have been patriotic. Yeah. So, okay. I am so filled with giddiness that I could burst, so we're going to keep the break brief. But assuming I don't burst in the meantime, we're going to be back in a flash with all the run-on sentences that are absolute interference. Okay, how about Dave's extra super Christian therapy? Ah, I feel like the problem's right there in the title. Yeah, no, that is right? in the title. Hey, guys, what you doing? Oh, hey, Noah. Heath and I were just trying to find him a therapist. You were? Yeah, you know, it's really important to take care of your mental health. And if there's something interfering with your happiness, a therapist can really help. Yeah, except the choices around here are kind of thin, you know? Yeah. Oh, how about this guy, Dr. Heinrich? Not a Nazi. That doesn't sound great. Yeah, but he, he's, he's not a Nazi. Guys, it's true. if you're looking for therapy, why don't you just try BetterHelp? What's BetterHelp? BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapists. It's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's professional counseling done securely online. Okay, but what if I need a therapist who's, I don't know, secular or trans-affirming or sex work positive? Well, that's what's great about BetterHelp. They have a broad range of expertise available, which may not be locally available in many areas. Plus, the service is available for clients worldwide. Wow, that does sound good, but... What if I don't like my therapist? Yeah, what if he turns out to be a Nazi, for okay, example? Okay, his name is not a Nazi. I know. Well, BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches, so they make it easy and free to change counselors if needed. I don't know, Noah. Sounds kind of expensive, honestly. Doctor not a Nazi takes gold bullion and well, does ex not ex actually, need a lot. BetterHelp can be more affordable than traditional offline counseling, and financial aid is available. All right, Noah, I'm sold. Where do we sign up? Just visit BetterHelp.com slash awful. That's better H-E-L-P and join over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental help with the help of an experienced professional. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp and God Awful Movies listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash awful. Ooh, ooh, what about this place? They promise to cure your gay or your money back. Okay, but you're not gay, though. Right. So it's definitely going to work. Oh, okay. Hey everybody, it's me, Mike Liddell. Well, they left the back door of the TV studio open while they went to take a smoke break again, and you know what that means. It's time for another great movie. This time I got Michael Flynn to explain election interference. Michael, go! Yep, that's right. That stuff is bad. You can trust me. I'm Michael Flynn. Thank you so much, Michael Flynn. And then, and then, and then after we got Hamburglar here talking about meat and bun safety. Bravo, 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 bravo. That's right. Wow, amazing rabble rabble. And then don't touch that dial because you're elderly and can't find the remote anyway. We got an all caps Facebook post here live in the studio for you to clumsily copy and paste to your nephew. Don't worry if they respond in any literal way. You could just say, I've been around the block a time or two. Isn't that right? Up oh, you're just letters on a screen. I'm Mike Liddell and it couldn't be more evident I'm back on drugs if I smoke them live on camera. <laughs> And we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to open up with a series of coming attraction type clips of uh, Mike Lindell and his guests reacting to all the awesome evidence we're not ever going to actually see. <laughs> yeah, this and the uh, theme music, which I wrote down in my notes, is oh, that doll is fucking haunted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Jason Voorhees is standing right behind the election right now, <laughs> based on the music. <laughs> It uh, solved yeah. mysteries. With <laughs> I added this, this jewelry box knows more than it's telling us. And then we see <laughs> Michael fucking Flynn starting your election interference. <laughs> yes. with Michael Flynn. Yes. Michael Flynn. OK, here's my question. And, and feel free to tell me if you don't know what do Republicans think happened with Michael Flynn. 
Yeah, right? What is their version of events? Is their version of events like, I mean, yeah, he was always a Turkish spy, but I'm sorry, he didn't get his paperwork in on time. We've all been there, right? Expired registrations, spy for the Turkish government. We've all been there. Yeah. Well, in reality, he did not get in trouble. He didn't get sentenced. Yet. Nothing's going to happen. Oh, well, yeah, because he got pardoned. Yeah. 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 So he's listing scary countries like China and Iran, and North Korea. And he does that twice in the same <laughs> minute. Okay. He's not even the only guy like throughout this movie. I think there was a bet going with all these guests to be like, all right, whoever can list the most countries at some point, because I think we all know <laughs> lots of countries on the world and we're going to have a contest. Oh, and spoiler alert, later in the movie, someone will win slash lose that when they include Italy and France in their dangerous countries tampering with our yep. election. Yep. List. Spain <laughs> is in there. Yeah. Yeah. He also harps on, I mean, throughout, they harp on the idea that it's the machines, right? Mm -hmm. So Michael Flynn explains how, like, old-timey elections were just, you raised your hand, and it was a night, and we wrote it down in a spiral notebook, and it all, <laughs> and we all had a clump of dirt, and we'd throw the clump of dirt at the guy we liked, and that was it. And now it was, it's hackable. It was the dirtiest. <laughs> yeah. I've got to admit, I genuinely thought he was going to conclude that series of sentences by being like, and that's what we should do again. Everyone raise your hand for Donald Trump. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he tacitly did that. Like, that is right. what he was yeah, saying. Right. Absolutely. What else could he possibly be endorsing there? Yeah. <laughs> so, and, and we get a little tease of Dr. Doug Frank explaining what a computer program is, but ominously, you know. <laughs> <laughs> he opens this by being like, computers, contrary to popular thought, are not a telephone with one guy on the other line. <laughs> and I was like, hey, Dr. Doug Frank. I didn't think that. I mean, I know Mike Lindell's viewers were like, oh, not a guy on the other line. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> also, they, they try to explain what algorithms are again. They did so badly last time. And this time they're like, yep, it's all algorithms. And then they show us a visual aid of what algorithms are, which apparently the movie thinks are e equations from high school calculus. Yes, yep, mostly, mostly. That's yeah, mostly. Yeah, in high school and physics. <laughs> Also, lots of equations about literally imaginary numbers, which is too <laughs> fucking perfect for this. Yeah. The square root of negative one is a big, big feature. It here. is in there. Now, it won't be the worst description of an algorithm in the movie, but we'll get to that later in the review. Yeah. Now, to be clear, the movie hasn't really started. We're still just like seeing tease clips from later on in the film of like all the awesome shit that is to come. And there's one point here where Mike Lindell like turns to the camera and says, well, I won't say what it is, but it rhymes with dominion. <laughs> and I'm like, Oh my God, dude, you just, you just fucked up the schmominion thing. Didn't you? <laughs> that you just don't know how that works. <laughs> He's trying not to get sued. Like me trying to trick Heath into eating a NyQuil wrapped in bologna. <laughs> <It's just> like... <laughs> Okay. I wanted both of those things. I just, I like bologna and NyQuil is relaxing. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So uh, he goes, he, Lindell says, all of these machines that were used cannot be done by humans. And I'm like, man, this, like, he, he very rarely rises to the level of coherence required to be incorrect. Right. <laughs> <laughs> also, can we talk about this particular graph they're showing here? It's got a line to show how many ballots there are mm -hmm. and like a predicted amount of ballots based on that. And those two lines are very similar. And they're like conspiracy. And I was like, <laughs> really? Those shouldn't be pretty much exactly the same, but like, you know, offset by a little bit. Yeah. Isn't that exactly what you'd expect? Right. One never occurs in nature. This has to be done by computer. Okay. Thank you. This is insane. They then they bring they say one hundred percent and they bring on a physicist who's like I'm a physicist. One hundred percent does not exist. Only <laughs> machines can do one hundred percent. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. It, it, oh. It's fucking insanity. Then we get a little clip of the three way split screen with him, General Thomas McInerney, and Colonel Phil Waldron. 
I just want to say that I was impressed and given much joy by the fact that they combined their two crazy military guys into the same Skype call for this movie. Yeah, right. right they right. have vastly different conspiracy theories. They're not pushing the same bullshit, but they were like, you guys are the army shooty shoot bang bang guys. Why don't you hop on this Zoom call? And that, like They literally contradict each other in the middle of this thing. <laughs> the one guy do. says, that's nice of you, but you're wrong. You're fucking wrong. My conspiracy is better. <laughs> They pan out on like some more of the airline tracking graphics that we got in Absolute Proof, which are going to feature prominently in this one as well. Oh, yeah. And then, of course, you get like it, like you do very often when you're telling the truth about stuff. You get his guest emphatically saying, quote, this is not made up stuff. This is real stuff. <laughs> and it's Michael <laughs> Flynn. Yes. It's Michael. F it, it might as well cut to a clip of me being like, I have no idea who drank all this mango nectar. I have no idea. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Seriously. I guess I would have tried some. <laughs> also, I almost did best worst visual aids because oh. they're all oh, amazing. Yeah. So one of the visual aids here is they're like, okay, China attacked us. And then they show, <laughs> they show a computer screen with a loading bar. And the loading bar goes all the way up to 100%, which... Apparently doesn't exist in physics. No, which is weird. it's, it's, it's weird. <laughs> it's it must have been computers. on a computer. But according to this movie, the hackers who stole the election made computer animation visualizations of votes being taken to Europe and getting changed to Biden and then going mm -hmm. back with yep. a bar that tells you exactly how much election you stole as a percent. <laughs> yeah. Why make those? And you know those votes were just unbearable, right? Like, every time they saw other votes, they were like, you know, when I was in Paris and it was like, oh my god, Mitch! <laughs> <laughs> I remember when you were a Trump oh. vote, you were so much cooler. Oh, and speaking of messy-ass graphics, how about that title screen, huh? <laughs> okay. Yeah, they, All right. they, they start the movie again with the exact same graphic here. It looks like Toy Story, but it's about title screens and fucking like captions and titles all getting in a major Avenger style battle on the screen at the same time. <laughs> the title screen, I shit you not, has 31 words and two ampersands in it. Apparently, the subtitle <laughs> of this film is, and I quote, the sequel to Absolute Proof with new evidence foreign and domestic enemies used computers to hack the 2020 election. Pithy. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Yep. Oh, all right. And then so we caught in on Mike Lindell ready to start the movie proper this time. We start off looking at spreadsheets. They don't even like when I make spreadsheets, I color some of the cells and I offset the rules. They didn't do, even do any of that shit, right? It's just yeah. a naked fucking spreadsheet. It's too far away for us to even see the information. He just wants us to know he's got spreadsheets for this shit. <laughs> I could make my own spreadsheets. They can't stop you. It's not illegal. <laughs> And basically, Mike's point here in the opening is we did such a great job proving our point a month ago. We made a sequel. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah. It's the never ending story. Part two. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and he repeats again that he has 100 percent proof, which, again, does not exist in physics. Right. So that's yeah. stupid. Mike Lindell is a computer. We figured it out. Everyone. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Well, then, and also this is where we make the, for the first time the claim that the first of his movies got 150 million views in just the first four <laughs> weeks <laughs> and it was available. Did they? I Mike, <laughs> Mike, did you click refresh a bunch of times? Did you? <laughs> I mean, you know, look, that's impressive. That would make you the fourth most watched YouTube video in 2005. That's a big deal. But like, <laughs> they, they, even if you're not lying. And you're lying. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, this is also where he goes off in his little tangent about how he gave everyone in the media his direct <laughs> phone number, but no one called him after his movie came out to ask him about all the crazy lies he told. And I, I just wrote my notes. OK, how much do you all want to bet I can get Mike Lindell's direct cell phone number? Within 48 hours by pretending to be from the news. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Oh, God. Pretend to be Donald Trump, whatever. Yeah, that'll do it. <laughs> so, and then, he, okay, so yeah, so he explains that the media just never even called him after that first date. And it was very rude. They could have at least sent a thank you note of some sort. It was so good. He's like, and you know what happened after I released part one and told everybody about it and they could call me? 
crickets. Yes. <laughs> yes. I'm so happy. What point do you think you just made? And then he starts teasing the, the evidence. And like, you know, he's like, oh, and we're going to see some evidence tonight that's so good. I haven't even seen it before. I've never seen this evidence. And then he realizes that those two things contradict, right? Like that he's never seen it and him telling us how good it is. And he's like, but I've heard it's the bee's knees. I, I hear good things about the evidence I'll see for the first time tonight. Yeah. He also gets all mad that Jimmy Kimball made fun of him on <laughs> okay. Jimmy Kimball Live. He will get every name in this movie so wrong. It's like he's talking about the Chinese knockoffs of the people he's discussing at any given moment. <laughs> Okay, let's let's be fair. Brad Raffensperger is very difficult to say. It's almost impossible to say that. So, <laughs> Raffensperger, Raffensperger, Raffensperger. 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 Um, nope. it's, he doesn't even get it wrong the same way every time. It's great. I so. <laughs> I have been known to malaprop in my day, but I get the R at the beginning correct. <laughs> Zach Braff. What? R. That's not even close. <laughs> There's F's. All right, so then we we rough cut our way over to this Michael Flynn interview. And I love, too, by the way, at the introduction of it, Mike Lindell apparently insisted that they put his name and title on a Chiron, too. So we got both of them identified, in case you didn't know. He's the MyPillow he's just, CEO. In two two-point larger font. And also Mike Lindell. Mike Lindell. <laughs> by the way, there was a little, like, about us, you know, contact us link box. Yes. Uh -huh, yeah. It's got a link to Mike Lindell's telegram, which, <laughs> and the telegram bio says he's an inventor. He invented the my pillow. He mm -hmm. considers that an invention. Well, and a towel. He invented the moisture wicking towel. So. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> also, speaking of Chirons that were stupid, not a general. Uh, Michael Flynn is not a general. No, no, no he's, he's not, not a general. He's decidedly anymore. not a general. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the fellow you, uh, formerly known as general. Yeah, but Mike Lindell's like, yeah, well, you know, if anybody knows a lot about election interference, let me start again. Let me come in again. If anybody knows a lot about this particular <laughs> subject that we talk about in these movies and knows all about my movies, it's this guy, Michael Flynn. And Michael Flynn comes in and immediately gets the name of Mike Lindell's first movie wrong. It's the ah. best. He gets it right, and, and then, then he corrects he gets it wrong. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> he goes as you said in your movie, absolute or uh, absolute truth. <laughs> I'd like you to say out the subtitle, also, please. It's a whole, it's important. It's pithy. And what's fucking fantastic about this interview with Michael Flynn is that Michael Flynn's a traitor and a foreign spy. But he's not a crazy, stupid drug addict. So you can just see him hating. He was like, oh, I just wanted a million dollars from a big terrorist guy. I didn't want to talk to Mike Lindell. And Mike Lindell's <laughs> like, I'm sorry so much for my spit is spraying on your face. If any gets in your mouth, use mouthwash immediately or you're technically on cocaine. <laughs> it's actually crack cocaine, which has mandatory minimums. That's yeah. worse. You, you want to be careful. So then we get a little CNN clip of, you know, them like pre-election showing like it's possible to hack into the voting machines, right? Oh, OK. So this is and we're going to talk about this quite a bit. These are hackathons. And for the record, they are a terrible way to test security because they have no standardization for what constitutes a hack. Sometimes you're given a username and password. Sometimes people plug their computer into a wall and say, hey, hack into this. No, you can't touch it. They're fun and cool. It's cool to watch gray hats do cool shit, but they're not a good indicator of security, especially not election security. Well, look, and the other thing, too, and this is going to come up over and over again in this movie is the existence of a weakness is not proof that something happened, right? Like, like. You could kick in my window and get into my house. That's not proof that you broke into my house. Right. <laughs> right? Right. Every machine's hackable. It's also, they're all fuckable, too. And but like, <laughs> it doesn't mean I put my dick in any of the computers at the election board. It doesn't mean I didn't also. But, and, and what I love is, so Michael Flynn's talking about, like, how the machines are connected to the Internet and they're hackable. And there's, like, all these scary computer words flying at us. It's like IP address, password, encryption, malware. And I'm, I'm thinking to myself, yes, that's exactly what terrifies Mike Lindell's audience of 75-year-old Luddites. Yes, absolutely. The machine. <laughs> he actually said IP address in like scare quotes. Yes. Yep. Says, like, he makes scare quotes in the air. 
is that under dispute <laughs> what IP addresses are or that they exist? Well, you know, Mike Lindell's audience is like, they know where you pee. <laughs> <laughs> I got to call the Piggy Wiggly and apologize. I was walking home from bowling and I had to go. <laughs> <laughs> we also get an amazing visual aid here again. It shows us a computer screen and it says secret information and the access yes. is growing to 100%. Yes. Yep. Why would we have these screens? <laughs> so, and by the way, so this marks, by the way, the third time in this interview that Michael Flynn will ominously name scary countries. The fifth time we've heard him do it. <laughs> Yeah. We're about 20 minutes into the goddamn movie at this point. This is where he sneaks Italy in to try and get a bonus point. He's like, yeah. China, Saudi Arabia, I Italy. Italy, put it on the board. I'm winning by one now. Yeah. Also, real quick, the Chiron that I don't think it ever leaves the screen that says Tuesday, April 20th, 2021. Mm -hmm. And it says worldwide viewer tally. 91 million mm -hmm. yeah uh, like this movie yep. apparently had 91 million people who watched the day before it released <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah well okay and i, I just want to point out like the website that we watched it on the counter said 39,304 and i'm not saying there weren't 2,315 other websites with similar numbers on <laughs> i'm just saying that i doubt it <laughs> Yeah. Also, this was their counter for frankspeech.org or whatever, which yes. to this minute, as I check right now, give me one second. Yep. Still doesn't fucking work. So right. 91 people were watching this movie on a website that wasn't functional. 91 million. Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Even if we gave him six orders of magnitude, it's still a goddamn lie. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> All right, so then we cut over to New Hampshire where uh, Flynn claims that each voting machine came preloaded with 300 Biden votes. We, we <laughs> spotted Biden 300 votes like a game of basketball against a little kid or something, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't, like, I have no idea where this, I Googled this trying to figure out where this came from. There was, like, one minor down-ballot race that had a weird 300-vote discrepancy on one machine at some so maybe the screw out of that but i can't even figure out where this came from yeah you know what donald trump can have new hampshire's votes there you go <laughs> you can sure have 300 of them <laughs> yeah. oh oh so and and this is the part where and this is so goddamn amazing flynn is trying to like talk down to mike lindell's level mm -hmm. at one point so he goes now so even the word algorithm is too many syllables for most people to understand <laughs> Oh, and Mike is so on board. He's like, finally, someone says yep. the truth. Yep. He's like, I would say it was unbelievable, but that's five fucking syllables. That's way beyond my comprehension. Comprehension is also too complicated. So it's no, too much. Complicated. God damn it. This is tough. <laughs> but, but yeah. Wrestling blurgler. <laughs> but the concept of algorithm despite having all of those syllables is super super simple it's just it's just not simple enough for flynn to get it right i guess <laughs> yeah uh <laughs> according to michael flynn quote it's a way to manipulate data in these machines these phones end quote what he, but what he's describing is a number right he's <laughs> describing the number 300 <laughs> that's not an algorithm i mean there's an algorithm to get there one Two, three, <laughs> four, et cetera, 300. There you go. So, oh, but so then Mike Flynn, he's talking about like the states that had discrepancies in their voting. And Mike Lindell says, we're, we're not going to say their names, but Arizona. And he puts air quotes around it. And I'm like, what do you people think air quotes do? <laughs> what? <laughs> I would give all the money in the world to be present at the meeting where someone taught Mike Lindell that trick <laughs> and just to watch him and that lawyer bad universe andrew go back and forth while like he's tickling the lawyer trying to do air quote no no mike in the air don't just say arizona arizona okay well that's fine we're on air <laughs> and then they they fucking just decide to like let hbo do their homework for him so in 2019, HBO released a documentary called Kill Chain that showed all these various vulnerabilities in 
the U.S. election system because, hey, in 2016, our election was fucking hacked. Right. Right. So obviously this was on everybody's mind. So now they're throwing it back in our faces and saying, see, the Democratic senators were worried about this when it was in the future. But now that it's the past, they're not worried about it anymore. Suspicious. (laughs) What's amazing is the whole thing about Kill Chain is that it's about disenfranchising voters through hacking. Very little of Kill Chain is like China's going to turn a seven into an eight. They're like, they'll fuck up the voting rolls so that right. African-Americans can't vote and steal the election. That's what Russia wants to do. Yeah. And because that's every other sentence in the documentary, every time they show a clip from Kill Chain, it'll just be like, computers are bad. Shut <laughs> Well, it, but what's amazing is that they don't always recognize because they're not smart enough to know what's being said. So they don't always recognize when the movie is undercutting their arguments. So a couple of times, the clips they show from Kill Chain just completely kill the argument they're trying to make. Yeah. OK. And, and then the other question, too, is like and this is just a general question about their conspiracy, I guess. But if China hacked the election to give Donald Trump all these extra votes, how did he also hack the polling? Yeah. Right? Like, like the expected thing ended up happening. Yeah. Anyway. Also, how did they hack the paper? Yeah. That's my question. <laughs> That's always. <laughs> right. Was it Chinese paper? <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Was it a Chinese I, paper company? Was it like Dunder Mifflin Shenzhen? And they like <laughs> tricked us? Yeah. It's prefabricated. You know, they put 300 pieces of paper inside every voting machine <laughs> that's, when they that, shipped them out. <laughs> Like, well, like that's not part of this conspiracy. <laughs> Come on. I just want to watch Mike Lindell, like, unscrewing paper to try to find <laughs> <laughs> I bet there's a transmitter in between the two. Plies. That's on the cutting room floor somewhere. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so and then this is the first time that Lindell is going to shill Frank's speech to us, his new, his, his soon to be new website. <laughs> <laughs> He's telling us about all this awesome website that he's going to have. And we see this shot of a lovely young woman with her mouth taped shut to represent the loss of free speech. But just in case that was too subtle, that symbolism, she's also holding a piece of paper that says free speech. Okay, (laughs) here is my question. Do you guys think they made an intern from my pillow film herself with tape over her mouth? Or is this weird stock footage? (laughs) So not clear. Honestly, the fact that it's green screened and they haven't put anything in as the background strongly suggests stock footage to me. Uh, (laughs) By the way, this woman's journey, it has a sequel and it's fucking amazing. We'll get to it when we get to it. It is. It is. Well, and then Mike Flynn, and this is such a weird line of evidence. He's like, consider how many times the government has told us that China cyber attacked us. And I'm like, Well, okay, so like that would be like trying to prove someone is guilty of murder by establishing that murder happens all the time. I mean, (laughs) (laughs) what point are you making? Listen, what I'm Mike Lindell, I'm telling you is that we very often catch it when we're attacked by foreign countries. Shit, fuck. Oh, man. (laughs) Michael Flynn, would you like to add something about Russian interference in elections? Go ahead. (laughs) He just starts to lower himself down behind the desk. Michael? Michael, where are you going? Are you getting shorter, Michael? They're shrinking him. They're shrinking him with a shrink ray. And, of course, this is the first time that we're introduced to the subplot of of the film, which is, of course, Mike Lindell trying to say Brad Raffensperger. And yes. never, I, like, I don't think he ever gets beyond three syllables, right? No. I, rats and fur or rats the fur is is the closest I think he ever gets. Taff is per furf. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fucking awesome. And this is this is where he introduces the like, I never cared about politics until yes. a horrible coincidence made Donald Trump president and our politics became a clown car for four years. Right. And he means that as a good thing. He's like, I never cared about politics. I just smoked a bunch of crack and then made an overfilled pillow that your grandma could sleep on. And then I was like, you know what I should do? I should recommend the president turn the nation into a police state. Yes. Right. Again, it's, it's, he's like those fucking podcasters that brag about how little preparation they do. Yeah, dude, that's not a good fucking thing. 
I really didn't know anything. I, you're 50. How the fuck did you get to 45 without ever noticing politics? He says at this point, this is so bizarre. And he goes back to the fucking well on this. He's like, you know what I've learned in the three and a half minutes I've been paying attention to politics is that most polit I swear I'm not making this point up. He makes oh, this he point this over and over. Most politicians have a political agenda. Constantly. <laughs> I count most. He says this four times. Are there times. nihilist politicians? Is there a nihilist party? <laughs> there should be. It must be exhausting. Someone from Wisconsin stands up, but that's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> Senator Carl Hungus is here. There he is. But <laughs> when he says that, because this is the exact order of the things happen, he goes, most politicians have a political agenda. And then Michael fucking Flynn, who is sitting <laughs> yes, next to him, yes. whispers, whispers, or they're compromised. <laughs> And then, and then Mike Lindell says, yes, or I was about to say that. Thank you. I know that word too. Or they were compromised or blackmailed. <laughs> or fade out, fade back in. Michael Flynn, you had a new point unrelated to what we were just saying. It's, this is the first time and not the last that I wrote in my notes. This is self spoofing. What are we doing here? <laughs> I'll tell you what, everyone. This Tuesday, why don't you just pull up a chair and watch along with me? <laughs> you know I mean? And then we learned, just in case that we were in danger of taking any of this seriously, suddenly an embedded beef jerky ad shows up at the bottom oh, of the screen. <laughs> this is Pistol Pete's. <laughs> Pistol Pete's Jerky, yes. which has a website. And my friends, if you've ever thought to yourself, hey, can a website go insane? <laughs> Come on over and check out the About Me page on Pistol Pete's Jerky. I would not eat Pistol Pete's Jerky for fear of my safety after <laughs> reading the About Me page on Pistol Pete's Beef Jerky. But if you order two, you get a free pocket constitution and a U.S. flag <laughs> sticker with every order. <laughs> Wait, seriously? Yes. 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 Get yes. the fuck out of here. <laughs> you have to check out this website. Every time you buy a 12-pack, he sends a senator a free constitution. Oh, Jesus So you do Christ. that, and he fucking sends <laughs> Andrew Qu fucking, I don't know, he sends fucking Bill de Blasio. Come up with a single senator. <laughs> and Bill de Blasio is also nope. not a senator. <laughs> Batman and Robin, what's my guy? Who's mine? <laughs> the... Wow. Ah, what's Cory Booker, Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's nope. just one of two. Nope. It's not him. He, it's not him. It's, it is, uh, it is. it's literally no, him. Yes. No, he's the one who's dating Rosario Dawson. Yes. yes. Andrew Cuomo. That's it. He sends something to Andrew. Andrew Cuomo is yes. not a senator. Oh, he's yes. a governor and not even of your state. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> New York Times thinks he's a great source on politics, though. This Excellent guy. source on politics. <laughs> <laughs> Oh shit, your other senator I forgot is Bob Menendez. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, okay. Right. The, the the very uh upstanding Bob Menendez. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. We don't all take a little money on the side. He's a senator, man. He's got to make ends meet. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. So and then, OK, and then Flynn recommends that we read Clarence Thomas's dissent in the Pennsylvania election decision. Which, no, no. Fuck you. <laughs> I mean, I, I, like his argument basically was like, hey, if you know, if, if enough people threaten to stop believing in elections, if they don't get their way, we really should let them get their way. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, now that I think about it, I do have too much rights to vote. Clarence Thomas. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. In fairness, Clarence Thomas Way better source than Michael Flynn about election. True. Yeah, true. I guess I guess if, if you're Mike Lindell and Michael Flynn's what you got. Yeah. Big step up. <laughs> every direction is up. <laughs> this is also where they try to counter the like, hey, didn't you lose every fucking possible lawsuit you had about this election? And they're like, well, you know, one judge actually did look at the evidence that that judge looked at the evidence. And I just want to point out that judge also rejected their case. Mm -hmm. He just also included like a hey, I looked at your evidence and it wasted my time. I want my life back statement at the end of his rejection. <laughs> and and the, But the whole basis of this is that like, they're like, yes, we sued, but none of these judges would even look at our evidence. And I'm like, man, that's a funny way of saying laughed out of court. I guess it's technically accurate. But like, again, <laughs> like we didn't even rise to the level where they bothered to look at our goddamn evidence is not a bragging point. No, 
No. Jesus. Okay. But then Mike Lindell shows that he really does love me and he tries to pronounce Brad Raffensperger again like, three times. This time he gets rats the fur, I think. <laughs> he starts panicking and it gets worse and worse. Can spin and rat the fur. At one point he does try to go, he goes like Brad Rastafer, Rastafer, and you know, you know the guy. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever his name is. And this is great. Because it's Mike Lindell retelling the time the president committed a felony on a phone call we all mm -hmm. heard. Yep. And he's trying to tell it in a way that doesn't make it a felony, but he does not know what was illegal about that call. So he's <laughs> like, you remember? Remember when the president done asked for votes fun? We asked him for the real numbers and he said, I don't got them, but we do. We did. Socialism and communism are coming for us. Well, and you could tell that he's made a great point here because we get stock footage of a bald eagle on a tree and a cross <laughs> with a sunrise <laughs> behind it. They might as well jingle keys in front of grandma, right? Just like, chica, 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 chica. They clearly wanted that cross to be blowing in the wind, and then they were like, that doesn't <laughs> work. Oh, doesn't happen. Cross. Fuck, fuck. We need a lady with a cape next to the cross to get the wind blowy <laughs> thing. And they do that. Wouldn't sell us a wacky inflatable crucifix. So <laughs> this is what we gotta use. <laughs> okay, now I need one of those. So, and then he also points out, like, in case his arguments aren't good enough, he reminds everybody of Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, which is the, try not to be too thinky, we'll take care of that yeah! shit, Proverb. Yep, don't try to understand things. Yeah, Mike. I see that you do live by that. Yeah, I see that you do live by that. <laughs> Don't use your brain thinking. And that's good advice for Lindell. Absolutely, yes. Yeah, exactly. This is the, the first, but definitely not the last time that Flynn is going to yell about how come he personally is not allowed to look inside the voting machines. <laughs> oh, I'm not allowed to look inside a voting machine? Why? Because this is a Wendy's and it's 4 a.m. Baloney. <laughs> Baloney, I say. Right, and again, like the fact that Michael Flynn is not allowed to look in our voting machines, if anything, helps me and my confidence in our election <laughs> integrity. Also, Michael Flynn, stop smacking your goddamn lapel. Oh, Mike! <laughs> oh, it's like he's signaling for help in Morse code on it for most of the movie. <laughs> I'm sorry, I was a spy. Please take me out of the studio. He keeps smoking crack every time they call cut. So, and then, of course, you know, why reinvent the wheel, aka make your own movie? So we see more clips from Kill Chain. And this is Dr. David Jefferson. And I, I didn't quite get his name because his name, which is the clip from Kill Chain, is blocked by both the timestamp and the logo and the Chiron. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then again, they show one of these clips where like the, you know, somebody's like, well, you know, and the certification labs keeps their processes secret. And I'm like, oh, their entire argument breaks down because of the existence of a certification lab, and they don't know that. <laughs> yes, <don't> thank you. <laughs> Third-party test labs do this. They're chosen by the Bipartisan Election Assistance Commission. They do a source code review. States do their own version of that same review, and then they double-check all this against paper ballots. Yes. <laughs> Yes, exactly. And then they and now they're coming out and saying like, and we're not even allowed to look at the code. And it's like, well, you're not allowed to look at it. Exactly. If you were allowed to look at it, that would be more evidence of how easily it would be hacked. You know who you'd tell it to? Fucking Michael Flynn. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> also, Mike Lindell. You just agreed that algorithm is too complicated a word. <laughs> what the fuck would you do with the right. code of a voting machine? <laughs> right, I, exactly. If, if they elected me supreme ruler of the United States tomorrow, I would turn over all the code to Mike Lindell on the condition that he's not allowed to show it to anyone but himself. <laughs> right, right. He's just sitting there going, okay, I'm going to find a two in here eventually. This is a big number. <laughs> he's 1, trying million, to memorize 100. hexadecimal. <laughs> <laughs> One D one thousand. So, all right. Well, I'll tell you what. If this movie can kick shit over to a different movie, I feel like we can get away with kicking it over to a skip. But we're gonna pause for a quick break. We'll be back in a minute with even more absolute interference. All right, your contract is all set here with Big Cell Phone Company. Finally, just gonna need you to sign here, and you're all set. 
And by said, I mean you've agreed to work in our diamond mines until you paid off your phone plus 20% interest or in our monthly fee of twenty nine ninety nine ninety nine. Sorry, what? Oh, I, I'm, I, I have a cold. And by cold, I mean a um, stone cold heart ready to steal your car keys if you leave them there when you go to the bathroom. You're doing it again. When, when I go to the bathroom? When you go to the bathroom, what? Dang it. Don't you guys just have a cell phone with, without any weird contracts or catches like that? Oh, I see what you want. Yes, thank you, finally. You want Mint Mobile. What's Mint Mobile? What? No, Eli, you're not even in this. What, what do you mean? I am. No, I'm here. I come into this cell phone store to sniff the cases. It's true. He does. Yeah, that tracks. Yeah, because it's... It's technically not a crime. Exactly. Yep. Okay. Anyways, Mint Mobile offers premium wireless service starting at just 15 bucks a month. $15 a month. That's great. What's their secret? Well, they're the first company to sell wireless service online only. By cutting out retail stores, there's no crazy overhead costs that just get passed down to you in the form of mystery fees. Instead, Mint just passes on sweet savings direct to you. Yeah, when Mint became a sponsor, I actually switched over to them and the service is great. Plus, I save hundreds of dollars a month. That does sound good. But... How many G's does it come with? I'm a big fan of G's. I want a lot of G's. Yeah, all the plans come with unlimited talk and text plus high-speed data delivered to you on the nation's largest 5G network. Five? Yeah. Okay. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep your same phone number along with all your existing contacts. And if you're not 100% satisfied, Mint Mobile has you covered with their seven-day money-back guarantee. All right, guys. How do I try? To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped directly to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash gam. That's mintmobile.com slash gam. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash gam. Okay, I'm in. If by in you mean you agree to wash my car this afternoon, say nothing. Dude, I, I can hear you. Ah, beans. All right, what about tacos? Yeah, I can do tacos. Ah! Ah, damn it. Mike Lindell, really? That's right, it's me, Mike Lindell, your greatest enemy here at the member in voting. Uh, dude, for the last time, you are not our greatest enemy. You're just a crazy person who gets us death threats from other crazy people. That's yeah. what the member then wants you to Yeah, it's, it's Dominion. We're literally running out of hypothetical dollars to sue you for at this point. Let me look inside your computers. For the last time, Mike Lindell. No, 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 no. you know what? No, let's let him do it. Here, have it. Take a look. Dude, dude, what are you doing? I, no, I don't care. This is the eighth time this month. Here, look all you want. Go. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Chinese, are you in there? What? Are you looking for literal Chinese people inside our voting machines? Yeah, they can fold up real small. I saw it in Ocean's Elevens. Okay. Try shaving a haircut. That's a good idea. You hear that, Chinese? Shaving a haircut. Chinese. Oh, I knew it! <laughs> <laughs> and we're back for more of this shit, and it's time to trot out our second guest. Replacing Michael Flynn will be Dr. Douglas G. Frank, doctor of nothing to do with any <laughs> goddamn thing related to this movie, and even the most... Like, I could not make up a less relevant degree for this man to have. He's a PhD in surface electric chemistry. And he's like, mm -hmm. that's a fancy name. And I was like, is it? Is it? <laughs> I know all those words. Well, all of those. And he explains. That's not even like, four oh. syllables. You don't even get to four syllables. In yeah. any of those. <laughs> I study surfaces, uh, often uh, electronic. <laughs> uh, chemistry. Made of elements. <laughs> they, uh, sort Chemicals. of. Um, at some point, there are elements involved. Well, but he tries to pretend that it's relevant. He's like, so, you know, I'm all about making models from data. I'm like, oh, well, well then it's pretty much the same. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I didn't realize they both involved numbers. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm sure this guy does make models from data, but you don't have to make <laughs> models to count votes. It's not, it's not math. It's counting. That's, that's what vote machines do. And to disprove this, Mike is going to also yes, include himself right. in the club. Right. Yeah, no, it's just like making pillows, too, really, if you think about it. I also, because I look at the numbers of how many pillows we sold, and I'm like, that's a lot of pillows, or that's not enough pillows. Well, <laughs> Dr. Frank fucking just <laughs> balks at that, right? He goes like, yeah, you know, all I ever look at are the deviations and the numbers. And Dr. Frank's like, really? <laughs> I feel like you'd have to look at pillows from time to time. <laughs> 
<laughs> he's like a, Dr. Frank is like a bad David Cross character. Yes. Right? <laughs> he sounds a little like David Cross. <laughs> Looks just like him in a little, <laughs> a little facial prosthesis if here the, and there. If yeah. this movie turned into the pre-taped call-in show and it's just Mike Lindell <laughs> oh. pulling across the screen of him in the first one going crazy about him going crazy somewhere else. <laughs> Honestly, if he had ripped off a prosthetic halfway through the movie and been like, I'm just David Cross fucking yeah, with you, I would have been like, okay. Right. Exactly. <laughs> That's pretty good. We don't know that that doesn't yet happen in this bit, but yeah. <laughs> so yeah, but after studying the data, Dr. Frank uncovered the algorithm. And Mike Lindell is like, okay, quick, quick, before the audience has the blindest clue what you're talking about, I want to ask a lot of questions. <laughs> <laughs> This PhD explains that an algorithm, it's like, uh, it's like making chicken parm. <laughs> and that's actually the truest thing in the yes. movie. Yep. It is the truest thing in the movie. However, the best way to exemplify that is not to keep a still image of a complete recipe for chicken parmesan <laughs> on the screen. I wrote in my notes, you know what? If you had told me this documentary would include a complete recipe for chicken parmesan, <laughs> I would not have believed you. And yet here we are. <laughs> <laughs> OK, but so Dr. Frank, though, he's done some some research here, right? He's got some evidence. He will not show us this evidence. Mm -mm. Right. We're just going to have to take Dr. Frank's word for it. But they took a, they looked at a, a list of people who are voters and then they went door to door and they said, hey, are you this person? Do you vote? And they were not. They didn't even exist. That is proof that there are phantom voters all over the country. OK, <laughs> Are you John Smith? No. <laughs> we, what? what? Get out of here. Absolute proof. Are you writing absolute proof in your little spiral notebook? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. Is his larger point, and I should explain, he talks for seven and a half hours. Yes. He will show us several million graphs. And it seems that his point is this. We looked at the U.S. Census of how many 20-year-olds, how many 30-year-olds, and how many 80-year-olds there are. And then we looked at how many people who voted. And those numbers are very similar. That's it. Minus some. Yes. Okay. So the <laughs> first thing that he shows us is here is the census data of how many voters are in Hamilton County, Ohio. That's the county that he's using. And then he's like, and then here is the second line that shows us how many ballots were sent out. Notice that the number of ballots sent out in some of the ages are even higher than the number of people. Now. This is the 2010 census. It is! The 2020 oh, yep. election. Yep. I looked it up, by the way. Yes, the population in Hamilton County, Ohio, went up in the last Did 10 it years. Change? It wasn't exact. Everybody wasn't exactly the same age <laughs> yes, 10 years ago. Yes, exactly. <laughs> They're going by fucking age. <laughs> Did any of the 20 year olds magically <laughs> turn into 30 year olds? <laughs> In the okay. <laughs> also, this graph, they're showing us a line graph of each age number and how many registered voters there were and how many votes there actually were. Mm -hmm. That shouldn't be a curve. Everyone has an exact age number. That's a, th <laughs> that's a thing that's digital, not analog. It should just be dots without connections or a bar graph. Yeah. Definitely not a line graph. That's dumb. Here you can see the 87 year olds ish. <laughs> <laughs> and then he throws up this third line, right? Here's the line of ballots and here's the line of ballots cast. And look, they go up and down in unison. I'm like, how would they not do of that? Of fucking course they do. Why? Yes, there is no fucking way that they could not do that. What would you <laughs> want to see? I want to know what he would see on that graph that would not be suspicious. Well, okay, so here's the fucking thing. Again, if you had any intention of actually making a point, what you would show us was... A very different looking graph from Hamilton County 10 years earlier, four years earlier, sure. eight years earlier, 12 years earlier. But because that's just how all of these graphs would look in any election ever in any fucking county <laughs> in the history of America, <laughs> they can't. They just have to look at that one graph and go, wow, that's suspicious as hell. And this is where Mike Lindell's like, and uh, you and I have never spoken before, sir. Is that correct? <laughs> <laughs> He is absolutely setting up a magic trick. I've, I've never touched the inside of your pockets anytime you've never met before. You can see the inside of my sleeves. 
Here and you, you have a choice of any playing card. Is that correct, Mike? <laughs> so, Dr. Frank says at one point, he's like, and you can use this to predict the data, too. You know, and of course, Mike Lindell's like, wow, because that's just his standard response when he doesn't understand something. But what he's actually saying, what Dr. Frank is saying is that using nothing but census data, the number of registered voters and statewide voting trends, he can predict how many people in a given county voted at a specific age. So it's so insane. And Mike Lindell doesn't understand what's happening. He just says, this is all real data because it's a chart. Charts are real data. <laughs> the source of this chart is frankspeech.com. I yes, see it, it is. on yep, the side of the is. thing. But even if it's real, it's just showing that this county in particular has about 2,000 people who are 87 years old. They all registered to vote and they all voted. That exists in physics. 100% can exist there. I'm not saying it's true, okay. but that's possible. I think Dr. Frank's point is like, well, if you look, the same general percentage of people per age voted. But that's not what the chart shows at all. No, no, <laughs> right. that's not that's what, what he, That's the point he seems to be trying to make with the chart. Yeah, right. Like, right. A lot of this counts on us having no idea what we're looking at. Yeah. Right. And I think the conspiracy theory is that the hackers made sure that every registration turned into a vote minus exactly 100 voters from each age. Right. Why would we do that? <laughs> no idea. And also, why wouldn't your chart show that? And why wouldn't it show that? Thank you. Well, but so, but that's what he's saying. Cause he's saying like it's, and then if you average these out, it's all the same number. I'm like, if you average anything out, you get one number. Right. That's what an average is. <laughs> that, but, but again, that's the point he's making. And, and like when they line the numbers up, of course, Mike Lindell has to go, wow, they're clap identical. And like, number one, <laughs> you are very clearly doing an impression of the bad guy lawyer from My Cousin Vinny. That is exactly what you're doing. And number two, <laughs> how the hell would you know they were going to be identical before he put the fucking paper up if you've never met before? I'm starting to think that you knew that was going to be the three of spades the whole fucking time. Mike Lindell's a plant, clearly. <laughs> They're also doing that saying things at the same time yeah, thing. Right, same right. time right. thing. I, oh, okay. I literally Sorry. just, all of my notes at this point in the movie are kiss. Yes. <laughs> but then they have to admit that they weren't even telling us something true or useful here. The the PhD chemistry surface electronics guy is like, okay, so they actually use different numbers for for different ages as the minus. Yes, but, thing, so, but 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 contradicting then, but, what we just said a moment ago. But every one of them has an average. <laughs> they used a real number minus each time conspiracy. <laughs> so and Mike Lindell has repeatedly keeps making this same point where he's like, you know what though, I'm glad Joe Biden got to be president because my I have a lot of Democratic friends. I'm sure you do, Mike Lindell. And none of them like what Joe Biden's doing. They're like, this isn't what we voted for at all. I'm like, dude like the idea that you have friends at all you're asking a lot of us right but the democratic ones come on <laughs> the amount of times that mike lindell says i don't care if you're a republican Democrat, or what <laughs> the idea <laughs> the notion <laughs> that mike lindell thinks he is going to like aoc is going to flip this on and be like huh he doesn't care if i'm a devil salesman <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's more of a middle of the road guy. Let me listen up to this surface chemistry electronicist. <laughs> oh, this is where we um we get return of green screen free speech girl. Yeah, this is where she tries to talk. She's got the tape still mm -hmm. and she tries to talk into a megaphone and then shakes her head like, no, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Cause, because her mouth because she's not allowed to talk anymore. Cancel culture you see. Yeah. So. <laughs> And he goes, Mike Lindell keeps turning to the camera and going like, and, and, and I, we should point out that this is not the stuff that was rejected by the judges. No one out there has seen this evidence. And I'm like, including us. And we're watching the goddamn movie. You keep saying <laughs> evidence, but you're not showing us. You're just claiming shit. Yeah. Right. Also, he thinks that's a win. Like, he's like, oh, I know what you're thinking. We lost all those cases in the one judge that did see our evidence from before that I still think is true. Punched me in the stomach and told me I was a waste of human meat. But this is <laughs> new. And that's why Brett Kavanaugh is going to vote at nine to zero. <laughs> nine totally to zero of the Supreme Court. <laughs> he's pretty damn sure he's still getting to the SCOTUS with this.
And by this point, the guest is just like, come on, man, don't interrupt. Just let me do my thing. You're you're trying to show me millions of pages of evidence on this <laughs> yep, computer that none of us can see on a screen behind us that's doubled up for no reason that none of us can see. Right. What the fuck? Like the guy was about to shake a bag of cat food and like throw it across the room out of frame. So Mike Lindell would chase after it, laser on the wall, slam into a wall so he could explain his thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then he's like, and and by the way, they keep saying shit like, and so it's all of the voting is rigged. Really, it's there's no point in ever having an election again. And I'm like, I agree, Mike Lindell's viewers never bother to vote ever, ever again. <laughs> That's right, everybody. You heard it. Stay home because Hugo Chavez is just going to send your votes to Italy to be changed to Joe Biden votes. <laughs> Doesn't even matter. Why would he outsource that to Italy? I, so, you know, just do it in Venezuela. Right. <laughs> and I also love that Mike Lindell's he's like, you know, we've all heard stories where people tried to go vote and they said you know you've already voted here and no we fucking haven't but we've no. all heard stories where is the closest this movie will ever get to sourcing anything yeah it's it's the closest <laughs> we'll get to hearing or saying in our hearsay <laughs> yeah right <laughs> and we should also point out that he is peppering this argument throughout which is really important his main argument is that we never would have caught on to the cheating if Donald Trump hadn't gotten more than 80 million votes yes, yeah, uh -huh. in the presidential election. So the undercurrent of this is like, if I hadn't been able to squeeze my butt cheeks together and hover four feet off the air, which you can see very clearly I'm doing right now, we never would have caught on to this. Like the base assumption that all of this springs from Donald Trump winning the presidential election by 20 million votes is fantastic yeah you, so, so to be clear the idea is that the democrats win in and we set it up so that like 12 million votes would be illegally cast for biden but donald trump did so much better than anybody expected that that wasn't enough and that's why we had to like shut things down in pennsylvania and do the thing that everyone said for months leading up to the damn election we'd have to do yep Right. And also, by the way, that that is predicated over and over again on the idea. And he'll say it explicitly that, well, you know, if if we just hadn't gotten to the votes, we would have just we'd all have said, well, shucks, better luck next time. And we would have gone to bed that night. And I'm like, really, you wouldn't have um, you wouldn't have questioned the integrity of the election months in advance. I, I wouldn't be able to find you personally, Mike Lindell, doing that on social media. Well, I can't now because <laughs> 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 social media has been erased for exactly that reason. But, you know. Anywho, I'm the way back machine. Maybe I could find. Oh, <sighs> and then he tries to say Ravensburger again. It's the fucking. Yep. Oh anymore. my god! It's, and again, it's like Eli's spelling came to life. It's amazing. And then he repeats Drafton first. <laughs> he repeats oh that god. point about politicians having political agendas again yep. and again. <laughs> or maybe they're compromised because he learned that from his good friend Michael Flynn. That sometimes political figures are compromised by foreign nations. Well, and, and so and now he knows that blackmailed is a kind of comfort or at least knows that blackmailed and compromised are not mutually exclusive <laughs> propositions because he says <laughs> or they could be blackmailed or compromised. <laughs> <laughs> and he concludes this section by saying, and you got to share this everywhere just as soon as we get our website working. Yes. again." He gives us such a. He's like a fucking cable guy. He's like anywhere from four to six weeks from now. Okay, ten to <laughs> four to twenty-four weeks from now, we're gonna have a website. It's gonna have a button at the top that says login, and you can just get right in there. <laughs> Even if your name's not Logan, you can get it. You use that. And put your but name. You there. have to be at your house between ten a.m. and midnight, or else, and you have to press the login button, or else it doesn't work at the time. And then, oh, and then Mike Lindell breaks into his own goddamn movie with breaking news about a confidential informant. He has breaking news inside his documentary. Yes. <laughs> also, we should point this out. It says confidential informant on the screen. He keeps calling him John. Yes, he does. <laughs> he does. And they've, now they've, they've disguised this guy's voice. This is not the voice filter that we loved so much that made it into Heath's best worst. This is pretty bad, right? Because I could take this audio and just like, you know, 
change the pitch and know what this dude sounds oh, like. <laughs> they just lowered it. They didn't yes. even do the disguising no, thing. They, they were just like, they just oh, my it. name is Frank. There's no way to know it's impossible. <laughs> they also don't know how to move the blur out of his face, and the guy almost moves out of it a few times. Yeah, uh-huh. And they have to oh. be like, stay in the blur. Stay in the blur. Dude, we don't know how to move the blur. <laughs> and then they change... The type of blur. Yes. They switch blur. He yes. obviously moved out of the blurs <laughs> so many times they that they were like, all right, blur. we're going to get a premium blur. I didn't want to have to pay this 99 cents. <laughs> we bought a pixelated moving one on Fiverr just now. <laughs> so, and, and okay, so first of all, this guy's evidence we will never see. Right, no. we we just have to take his word for it. And secondly, the evidence itself. Well, the evidence was blurred out and mocked. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm evidence. You can't see me. Yes. I'm a spreadsheet. But the, <laughs> but the evidence itself is evidence that there were phones that were connected to the internet at polling locations. That's it. Okay, I went down a rabbit hole for this. And I went to crazy camp. There is no legitimate website that's like, hey, this is what this is. But if you go to freedom.maga.killyourdad with a, with a rusty pickaxe.org.net slash coffee, Specific. you can find a bunch of this crazy bullshit. And the point is they give the people who are like the election monitors these cell phones so that you can call election interference officials and be like, hey, the machine broke or hey, mm-hmm. Fucking that li- drunk lady you hired to wash the glass on the front of the machine keeps trying to Xerox her butt cheeks, right? <laughs> hey, Melissa Carone is walking up and down our <laughs> rows of computers and kicking the wires. <laughs> she has she has a giant magnifying glass and keeps saying Bellamentary, right? <laughs> they get a phone. Those phones are capable of being Wi-Fi hotspots. And who makes those phones? Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. TCL. What is TCL? A Hong Kong based electronic company. It's actually, it's not even made by, it's made by a company in Europe that's partially owned by a China. But yeah, it's Alcatel, Alcatel it's a, from Nanterre, France. Yes. But right. yes, they some of their <laughs> yes. stuff. It's so stupid. Right. Okay. So that's the conspiracy theory. But the evidence is that this guy went to, and he says, I mean, like, again, we have to take his fucking word for it. He says he went with a Wi Fi detector to the polling places where they were doing the runoff during the Georgia runoff, right? And he detected that there were phones that were connected to the internet. At the, like, people were in there. He built a Raspberry Pi, according to his own, and his Raspberry Pi picked up suspicious Wi-Fi in the air in Georgia. He, he says, my device records Wi-Fi signals like a camera. And I was like, nope, not like a camera. Not like a camera. <laughs> That's not what that means. But more generally, what do they think a hotspot does? Do they think if you turn on a Wi-Fi hotspot on a cell phone, all the devices in the area fucking meld to it like the Transformers <laughs> and like have to give all their information to it now? Well, if the Chinese, partially Chinese owned French company that owns that made it makes them do that, then that's obviously right. They, they, would obviously they set them up. It's that. like how when you turn on an iPhone, you got to select the language. When you turn on a TCL phone, you have to select which election you want hacked and you everyone always picks 2020. <laughs> But again, so yeah, we have a unknown source with evidence that we can't see that wouldn't convince us if we knew who he was and what he was talking about. Even if he wasn't lying, it wouldn't be good evidence. And he is. Because again, all we have is a shot of his hands holding a really badly made raspberry, like a toddler's made raspberry Pi. And the raspberry Pi is like, there is Wi-Fi wherever this camera is shooting this raspberry Pi. (laughs) Yeah, somewhere in the vicinity. Yeah. All right. So on that bombshell evidence... We're going to take a minute to collect our breath here. But first, let me give Act 3 the hard sell. Does he have a note that says we did it with the words China signed at the bottom? Will he present a photograph of a guy (laughs) taking a photograph of somebody swapping out ballots? Will his big evidence reveal at the end actually be less impressive than either of those two things would be? Yes, Find out the answer to that question is yes. When we return for the rambling conclusion of... Absolute interference. Uh, flowers? Meh. Andy? 
Yeah, candy's good. I don't know what she likes, though. Hey, guys, what you doing? Well, we're trying to think of what to get our moms for Mother's Day, and it's right around the corner, so... Mmm, how about a Hello Tushy? Ooh, like a boy toy? Yeah, I think Mom might get into that. No, Heath, not that kind of Hello Tushy. The brand new Hello Tushy 3.0 Modern Bidet Attachment. It's stylish, eco-friendly, easy to install, and will help stop flushing her retirement down the toilet and TP costs. Oh, that does sound good. Hello Tushy 3.0 cleans butts like a champ, but it doesn't stop there. It cleans itself with the Smart Spray Automatic Self-Cleaning Nozzle. And when we say anyone can put this shit together, we mean even your parents. Yes, yours. Hello Tushy 3.0 attaches to their existing toilet with no electricity, extra plumbing, or tech support FaceTimes and cuts toilet paper use by 80%. So the Hello Tushy bidet pays for itself in just a few months. Wow, so it's like a gift and a money saver. That's right, Heath. Plus, every Hello Tushy bidet attachment comes with a 60-day risk-free guarantee and a 12-month warranty. Give the gift of a clean butt. Go to hellotushy.com slash awful to get 10% off plus free shipping. That's a special offer for our listeners at hellotushy.com slash awful for 10% off. hellotushy.com slash awful. Thanks, Eli. Now I just need to figure out what to get Heath for his birthday. Oh, I'll think of something. Wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. What is it you have to say? Don't worry about it. Just, uh, is it a bidet? Because I already have a Hello Tushy. He's gone. He's gone. Oh, I should probably check my email. Noah, no! Dude, my laptop! Eli, did you get it in time? Just barely, Heath. Just barely. Okay. What, what are you guys talking about? Get what? Yeah, no, I hate to break it to you, but your laptop was compromised. Compromised by who? China. Obviously. My laptop was compromised by China. Yeah. Yeah. We have it on good authority that several of the parts in your laptop were made in China. What? Yeah. yeah. The casing, some of the microchips, maybe all made in China. You are welcome. The case. Yeah. Guys, just because a thing is made in China doesn't mean it's compromised by China. It doesn't. No, I mean, I, I mean, I, I guess I can see how you might think that if the whole thing was made in China altogether, but you can't hack a computer by making the laptop casing. Are you sure you can't do that? I feel like you can. No, a likely story from a guy who had Chinese food for lunch. Get him. He compromised. Uh, compromised. Exactly. Unplug him. Unplug Interesting. Him. <laughs> And we're back for still more of this shit. And now it's time to welcome back his kooky ex-military guys. This is General McInerney and Colonel Waldron. Okay. General McInerney decided to hold perfectly still and spend his entire appearance looking like he's watching a laser slowly cut James Bond in half. <laughs> it's not clear that he's not actually doing that. Right, exactly. That, that's fair. Method actor. I also want to point out that General McInerney is way, way, way fucking crazier than Phil Waldron, which is saying a lot. Yeah. Uh -huh. So every time Phil Waldron will be like, yeah, you know, we checked on those IP addresses, McInerney will be like, I'm so sorry to interrupt you. COVID was a deliberate biological attack by the <laughs> Communist Party. <laughs> yeah. That's not an exaggeration. He says no, that. No, it isn't. Bio-warfare from the Communist Party of China, and they apparently... Shut down capitalism by getting us Joe Biden, the yes. uh, communist. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Exactly. He goes like, this is the Chinese doctrine of unrestricted warfare. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. No, it's only the Chinese okay. people that had a form of bellum Romanum. He, yeah. He calls it. He says, yeah, he says unrestricted warfare. And then he says it goes back to Sun Tzu and Mao Zedong. <laughs> I was like, yeah. Uh, yeah, they work together on a lot of that philosophy, <laughs> the two of them. Yep. <laughs> he even recommends the book. He's like, you, you can go to Barnes & Noble and buy Mao's book. I was like, what aisle can I buy it in? <laughs> he says Barnes & Noble. Barnes & Noble. Yes. You can go to the Barnes & Noble near Burlington Coat Factory on 15 if you want. <laughs> you can go down to the Woolworth and you can get yourself a nice book and a nice phosphate soda. 
<laughs> so and General McInerney says at one point, I love this so goddamn much. He says, you know, socialism is the front door to communism. And I'm like, do you mean the back door, dude? Because <laughs> the front door to communism is communism. <laughs> Oh, fucking Mike Lindell tries to show for Frank's speech. I tried to diagram his sentence here. I wound up with a Mandelbrot set. It was really fucking weird. <laughs> yeah. Although we do get his lawyers first diving on the hard cut button here. He goes on the other social media platforms. You talk about the vaccine. You almost get arrested. Blackout. Yeah. He starts to say another word and everything blacks the fuck out. We come back and he's got a black eye. <laughs> Okay, my favorite part of this whole scene, though, is Mike Lindell. He has to not talk for some time here because he has two guests at yep. the same time. Yep. So most of the time, he's just scrolling up and down his giant list of millions of <laughs> cells of spreadsheet for no reason. Yep. But a bunch of times, he keeps moving his mouse onto the screen that we're <laughs> yes, watching yes, yep. yes. during his Zoom call, and it's fucking like he clearly got yelled at at one point, <laughs> and then you see Lindell with his hands clasped together in front of him <laughs> to avoid <laughs> touching his mouse by accident, <laughs> and they start shaking. He oh, won't do play it. with the mouse so bad. It's oh, nice. I got some. I got some funny cartoons in the other tabs, and I just want to watch them for a second. <laughs> oh, well, Colonel McInerney <laughs> calls the members of our defense team cancer. <laughs> Oh, yeah, right. And so this, this one is, is beautiful too. Cause like Colonel Doug Waldron is going like, yeah, well, and it, the, you, you know, the reason that our state apparatus didn't catch this hack as it was happening is because they didn't know what to look for. And McInerney cuts in. He's like, no, no, no. They did catch it. They're a bunch of fucking liars. That's what happened. Doug, <laughs> Doug, right. my communists, <laughs> the U.S. military and intelligence apparatus, the, those notorious socialist communists. Yep. Pro Democrat military people. Those yeah. liberal bastions of the military and the intelligence <laughs> community. This is where he also tells the audience that this is their Iwo Jima. <laughs> oh, God. Is it General McInerney? Mm -hmm. Is this movie on Mike Lindell's non functional website your Iwo Jima? <laughs> Just U.S. Marines stacking up zeros and ones in the rain. <laughs> <laughs> There's also, at the end of this interview with the two crazies, there's this great moment. They don't just cut away to the new information. So we watch Mike Lindell be like, good stuff, guys. I love you. Big kisses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so forever. And I, I just want to reflect on the where we are at this point in the movie, right? Keep in mind that up until now, what's going on is that they're accusing the Democrats of having done the thing that Trump actually did, <laughs> right. but as filtered through the imaginations of deeply stupid people who don't know how anything works. Right. The thing and he, Michael Flynn. Yeah, and the, and the guys who say, did it. Yeah. Exactly. The thing he did with a guest of one of the people he did it with. Oh, that's right. Because this is where Mike Flynn shows back up and they're like, they literally cut right to Mike, <laughs> Mike Flynn here. Yes. Yes. They're like, it's we had amazing. some more good shit with that guy, yeah. didn't we? <laughs> and this is, this is Mike Lindell. Mike Lindell telling you to go to us. Hey, are you a crazy person watching this? You got to pay attention to local politics. Go to a city council meeting and yell into the middle distance. <laughs> yes. Well, I, at first, that's what I thought he was doing. I thought he was sicking these viewers on city councils. What he's doing is encouraging them to run for goddamn office. Yes. How terrifying is that? And you know what? Do it, Mike Lindell viewers. Oh, please. This is my bread and butter. No. I need more margarine. <laughs> no, 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 no. We have more important <laughs> concerns here. <laughs> okay. Is this where Michael Flynn explains that the Dominion machines are kind of like um a milk carton at the store that doesn't yes. have an ingredients list? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yes. What yes. ingredients does he think are in milk? <laughs> he would like to look at the side of, what? of a voting machine and see votes metal milk freedom <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly so and the way he gets into this and this is fucking amazing right he's like look if if mike sold pillows that had broken glass inside of them that's how he's going to get into is we need to know what's in the voting machines conversation but when he says that mike lindell is so very clearly panicking 
right? Like you can see beads of sweat just popping up. He's like, oh, I don't like this. I don't like where this analogy is going. Oh, please oh. don't, please don't, please don't. And then he goes like, but we need to know what's inside of things. He's like, oh, okay. I don't know exactly what that means, but I think you're not telling anybody about that time that we had that problem and, with them pillars. <laughs> and then they show us a video of somebody unscrewing computery boxes to find yep. the evil algorithm. <laughs> yeah. It's like, like there's a secret boxed up area secured by screws that has the Biden votes inside. Yep. <laughs> you can tell those are the blue wires. You got to cut them and then America comes back. Also, by the way, during this moment, Lindell and Michael Flynn have two very suspect cell phones on their desk, probably made in China, yeah. probably doing some stealing. Probably also don't forget to get your beef jerky. They paid for two ads, one at the beginning, yep. one in the middle. So. Yep. One at the beginning, <laughs> one at the end. And this is where Mike Lindell tries to say, when you look up Patriot in the dictionary, <laughs> you get a picture of, of General Flynn, which would already be funny. But what he actually says is, so when you, if you, was you, if you, when you, dictionary, if you go there to the remember dictionary dictionaries. store. He actually and you stops buy and one. goes, remember dictionaries, folks? <laughs> <laughs> if you buy one Mike Lindell at the Dictionary Depot, you'll they'll sell you a picture of himself. Oh, look, here's a video of him when he was still allowed to wear his military uniform. <laughs> you remember that? You remember when you were on stage at the Republican? Republican National Convention going lock her up while That's, you were a spy and I was committing fun, right? crimes. I've got, I'm shocked that my country tis of thee didn't start playing during this little <laughs> send off. It, it was, comes close. It go, <laughs> they go beyond that at the end of this. They do. They, they do. Also, just really quick reminder, the only places in 2020 that did not have a paper trail for their ballots were some counties in seven states, all except one went to Trump the other one was Jersey. There's no dispute on any of those states. Right. Yes. It's, it's, yeah. this, this is so fucking ridiculous. And the way that they make the argument is even worse than the, the argument itself. So we, we finish up with Michael Flynn. And then Mike, Mike, three goddamn decibels higher all of a sudden says, <laughs> now for the moment we've all been waiting for. And if now credits, for the moment we've all been waiting yeah, for. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you for re recreating the moment there. Yeah. And if the credits had rolled there, that would have been great, but they didn't. <laughs> I thought he was full of shit, right? I was like, no, the moment I'm waiting for is the end. But I didn't know about the goddamn voice filter yet. Okay, so before we get to that, <laughs> he, he has to spend a long time pointing out that nobody discredited his first movie. And I'm like, oh, no, we totally discredited it. We first. did. We, if you we wanna, nailed it. The thing iTunes. is, is that we just got it for everybody. After everybody heard us, yeah. they're like, yeah, it's pretty much. All you need to go fuck yourself is really all the reputation that's needed. There. And to be clear, the moment we've all been waiting for, he thinks, is minute 95 of his second movie. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what's, that's what's happening right now. Yeah. So now what he's going to do, this is the big reveal, right? This is the big evidence. He's going to have the evidence from the last movie, the unsourced spreadsheet of attacks on our election that he showed us in the last movie. He's going to have that verified whatever the hell that means by an expert whose identity he's not going to reveal to us but <laughs> he assures us that he has an online certificate <laughs> which is the highest standard in cybersecurity. they don't even show us the certificate i googled this they literally took a screenshot of the top of the page where you go to get the certificate let me be clear the thing that they show us is not the certificate. It is the header from the website where you get the certificate. Right. Yeah. Right. So the credentials we have are this man's claim that he's, quote, been around computers a long time. But it, well, he's a ninth degree black belt from the DeVry <laughs> okay. in cybersecurity. The, when they when they go over the bar graphs oh, of his credentials. This was fucking crazy, okay? Yeah, because we couldn't read them. <laughs> not only could we not read them, he did not possess all the skills listed on the bar graphs. Right, right. So Mike Lindell pulls up these color-coded graphs, and he's like, so point on this graph to where you are in terms of your cybersecurity expertise. And he's like, I'm more the yellow, this one and right this here. this is where they have to admit he's a yellow belt. Yeah, he's like <laughs> yes. a yellow belt. He's like, really, it's fourth degree yellow belt from the <laughs> I was, 
I was laughing so much by this point. This is a hilarious movie. Well, okay. Yeah. But so they're doing, this is the thing though, is that they're doing the disguised voice thing. But Mike Lindell, as we have already established, cannot shut the fuck up and let other people talk. And they don't know how to do the voice change thing on just one of their mics. So as this guy is doing his voice, <laughs> blah, 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 Mike Lindell will keep coming and going, right, right, I see. Okay, yeah. okay. Yes. <laughs> you can't believe it. And no it is, way. It is the single, okay, it's the second funniest thing that ever happens. The funniest thing is later on when I shit you not, at one minute, 39, 35 of this movie, someone unmistakably farts into that sound filter. <laughs> That's that is the best part of the movie. <laughs> it's, it's, but luckily, we don't know who it is because it's modulated. <laughs> <laughs> you even hear the sigh of relief that false afterwards. Identity is <laughs> A blur just starts floating out from behind the table. <laughs> I'm a fart. Please don't sue me for $1.6 billion because my identity's hidden. I just, I just love the thought that it's it's like the sound guy on stage. He's like, oh, wait, I got a good one. Hold on. Because it happens more than once. <laughs> they didn't cut it. They didn't cut the fart. No. They watched this before they put it on the internet. They were like, <laughs> should we keep the boy? <laughs> Shit your piss. <laughs> <laughs> and my girl was like, fuck yeah, keep that part. <laughs> it's the most amazing thing in the world and we should point out the guy sitting next to him and they've got his whole body blocked out he looks like a goddamn minecraft creeper well this is all gone and they're showing him hexadecimal he's he's got a screen full of hexadecimal up there and he's like tell us what we're looking at here the guy's like I don't know man I don't read hexadecimal but you're saying that this could be something I mean it fucking could I mean, it could be porn dude how come there's no letter Z's in Ohio what's going on here conspiracy Oh, but he explains that this hexadecimal is a cyber footprint locked in time so that when this does go to the Supreme Court, it's the best evidence for a chain of custody. Oh, God. And again, <laughs> they don't tell us where they got it. They even talk about chain of custody, but they never tell us where this information came from. <laughs> they imply that this came from voting machines, which if it were true, it's not. But if it were true, is a huge crime. Right. This is a crazy lie that if it were true is like treasonous level felony. Like we stole this election data using this guy and his fart. You can't. See. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. So now the, the star of the first movie finally shows up. That's right. The flight map where you can see the votes flying from China to the United States. But they didn't it's... cut the top off this time. So you can very, <laughs> they say layover city. If you pause it, you can see they have a layover city listed for the cities. And how long, did, how long a layover did you have between the fucking hacks? A lot of the votes had to stop in Reykjavik. It just makes sense geographically. <laughs> You're used to the Mercator projection, so it doesn't seem like it to you. <laughs> but yes. <laughs> But yeah, so they, they show us the lines of the graphic. The red ones are the are the hacks that didn't make it. The green ones are the ones where they changed the vote, you see. And this has been rendered into a graphic, so that obviously is sufficient to prove that it's real. Oh my god. Yep. I I honestly I almost felt bad for this blurred guy because he has to try to explain what Mike Lindell thinks he's trying to say. And mm -hmm. this guy's like, okay, uh, okay no. apparently you think hacking is a missile. Fine. <laughs> Green <laughs> missiles are hacking. Great. So the red ones are to 
checking to missile the next uh, vote. Checking those are assistant to the regional hacking. <laughs> right? Well, and and then I, I love how he keeps accidentally undercutting what because he's like he's like and this is the map of all of the hacks that happen. He's like right, and he's like yeah, they happened in all fifty states, right? And he's like yeah, he's like even Alaska and Hawaii, and the map so very clearly doesn't have any lines going to Alaska or Hawaii. <laughs> no. It's so clearly just the continental United States, and the guy's like. Uh, yeah, and he's like scooting over yep. a little bit. He's going, can you blur this? Can you blur the map now? <laughs> <laughs> I'll fart in front of the map and then you guys can blur out a list. <laughs> All right, so now we know the green ones and the red ones. What's the purple one? And the guy's, that's grape, man. I don't know. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> Those what? are the grape packs. <laughs> so. <laughs> All right, but we got that graphic long enough. Now we're going to look at another spreadsheet that, again, is too far away from us, for us to see. They don't even, like, let it take over the screen. It's just on the screen behind the two of these guys, and they're talking about it. <laughs> now, this particular spreadsheet is supposed to be looking specifically at 19 of the different hacks on his little airline hacky screen. Right. right. So what this is, is this is, you remember that big, fucking lie chart he had at the end of the last movie where he was like look at all these numbers oh my gosh where did we get these numbers according to Mike Lindell people were like I don't know man did you put those on a spreadsheet and he's like "All right, we're making a new movie I think people will really be convinced if we put it on a spreadsheet (laughs) well and so he keeps saying that he validated those numbers right because people clearly told him like the people that are you know whatever, in his life that'll watch his stupid movie and actually be honest with him are like, okay, dude, you presented a bunch of data, but you didn't validate anything. We don't know where it came from or what it is. We just have to take it. So now he keeps saying he had it validated. Yep. Now, what the guy will do is go like, yeah, we checked, and that is a real IP address. Validated. (laughs) Done. (laughs) Check. (laughs) He also explains, blurred out security fart, also explains that he had to convert the raw data from Chinese. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they had Chinese hexadecimal ones and zeros. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just to help everyone out, that's Ling and Yi. So zero and one. <laughs> And then, of course, Mike Lindell has never heard of a laser pointer and has no ability to highlight the cells on the spreadsheet behind him. So this is where he starts standing up to point at the various cells. It's amazing. He keeps getting way too close to blur fart guy. Yeah. So that to point at the stupid screen. There's two screens. He could be pointing to the one closer to him. We can't see it either way. It's stupid. right. It does. You were just matter. moving your mouse around. We saw it. But Blur Guy has to keep awkwardly backing up and like sliding his chair almost out of the blur so that Mike Lindell's not in his face with a penis in his face. It's amazing. It's so silly. Look, remember, this is a Borat bit standing up in the middle of the interview. It looks ridiculous. (laughs) He's not lit up there or anything. (laughs) He also says you don't have an IP address unless you're connected to the Internet. I guess your computer disappears the minute you're not on the internet. (laughs) And this, oh, sorry, this is one of my favorite moments. One of the columns on the bullshit spreadsheet says network code. Mm. And so Mike Lindell, (laughs) who's been going column by column, goes, what's network code mean? And Blurred Guy goes, that's the codified End of sentence. He's yep. just like, yes. Ah. yes. And then he carries on and he goes, and Mike Lindell goes, okay, so cyber guys know this stuff. And then he goes, <laughs> <laughs> that guy earlier had to explain what the column for date and time was. <laughs> After Literally. he did longitude, he asked him to do latitude as well. Yeah. So, and then he goes, and they have <laughs> on the spreadsheet, it's like source, right? And, and 18 of the 19 of them say China and one of them says North Korea. And he says, so these all came from China, right? And the, and, and security fart guys like, yep, they all came from China. And I'm like, I can see the chart. It's not can, all the I same. I can barely see it, <laughs> but I, I can, can see that. I know that that's wrong. Like your chart is bullshit. At least get your bullshit chart right. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so here's the other thing that we have to kind of highlight here. I, cause I don't know where he got his information. He never explains where these hacks are coming from, right? How he knows any of this shit. But the idea that there are various computers in China that tried to hack into various computers in the United States on the night of the election, right? Like that proposition is 
100%. I know that doesn't exist in physics, but that is 100% true, right? Yeah. Obviously, at every fucking moment, there are computers from everywhere trying to hack into computers from everywhere. Right. And that's the, uh, like, if his evidence is correct, that's still all he would be showing us. Yes. There are a good deal of computers in China and the United States at every moment. Yep. Yes. Yes. Yes, exactly. Yeah, that is his point. And again, he never even compares it to, like, the, the normal amount of traffic. No. He wouldn't even begin to understand the normal amount of traffic. If there was one computer that attempted to hack one computer during the month of November, it would still have been called absolute proof. There would have just been less lines. <laughs> I'm right. surprised there weren't like submarine routes for some of these hacks yeah. that went through like the ocean or like around, <laughs> go through the Suez. I know it's ironic because he is a literal crackhead who is very obviously still on crack. But you know when a crackhead is lying to you and they add a bunch of weird, unnecessary detail about why they need to swipe into the subway, right? They can't just be like, I need to swipe into the subway. They've got to be like, and then the pigeon grabbed my wallet yes, and it took right. it up into the sky where <laughs> Spider-Man started to karate kick. That's this documentary. And then I got it shot is. with a grape-flavored missile. I don't know what was happening to me today. This is the grape-flavored missiles of documentaries. Yeah, right. <laughs> Right. And then at, at the end of this whole presentation, he turns to fucking, they, we get another goddamn audible fart from the, uh, from into the noise <laughs> filter. And he turns to the, <laughs> it's a little one. And you can, you can hear it go like, yes. but it's low. So it's but like, it's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's when I started thinking it was a vindictive sound guy. That's still my theory that like whoever it is who had to operate the camera was just done with this shit by then. <laughs> Just farting it. He's just got Michael Flynn, but he's just farting it. Michael Flynn's lavalier mic <laughs> while he's swearing it. <laughs> he's trying to take it off and give it to him. Absolutely not, Michael Flynn. You just sit right there. I'm going to press my ass to your chest for the entirety of this interview. If you want to ride home in the in the set van, <laughs> put up with this. So, yeah, so right at the very end of all that, he turns to this guy and he goes, so this everything on this spreadsheet that you yourself created, this is all 100% accurate person who hasn't identified themselves, correct? And he's like, yep, yep. And he's like, well, there you go. <laughs> I don't know what more you could possibly want. Oh. <sighs> And so, okay, so we cut away from that conversation in the, in the middle of somebody's fucking point, and suddenly the number 518,617 is sitting there with no indication how they arrived at it. None. But that's <laughs> the number of votes that they're saying were flipped in those 19 attacks that we just saw. Math. Yep. Done. <laughs> some, some magic happened, and then, yeah, I want to point out all bullshit numbers end in seven for some reason. I don't know why yep. they always end them in seven. <laughs> But yeah, out of nowhere, that number appears and he's like, look, that's the number of votes just from those 19 attacks. And then we divvied those up in these five states. And what do you know? Trump won by a lot of votes when we did all that. <laughs> OK, but everything Noah just said had about 19 cuts to make it all yeah. happen into yeah. that sentence. <laughs> what, what was happening during those cuts? Like, that would have fucked up their math about nothing? What was happening when they did the cut? <laughs> he was just getting distracted. Ooh, maybe there was a lot of fart and they couldn't. They just, there was a point where they're like, all right, well, we can hear it now, Dave. Come on. <laughs> Dave, now you're just shitting. <laughs> now you're just <laughs> shitting onto Michael Flynn's chest. And his, his quiet weeping is getting picked up. <laughs> So then, yeah, so then we cut to um, the MSNBC <laughs> clip of Adam Schiff going like, well, you know, China's very good at cyber espionage. And they're like, gotcha. See? <laughs> or as Mike Lindell calls him, Adam Schiff. Yeah, yeah. See, he doesn't get any of the names right. <laughs> oh, he says that they stole your corporate trade secrets. And I just want to say it'd be fucking awesome if China steals our corporate trade <laughs> secrets. <laughs> That'll scare them off for good. Now you have to smoke the whole pack of puzzle in a thunderstorm for a <laughs> Some Chinese going, going runs in going, I'm out. I'm out. No, no. I'm done. I'm, can't. 
I don't care. You could send me to the place where you send the Uyghurs. Guys, have we tried two characters doing something wacky at the beginning of the sketch and then they touch on it again at the end of the sketch when the copy's done? <laughs> <laughs> And just got this hot off the presses. Oh, 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 oh. And we have to point this out because this is one of the worst goddamn film fuck ups that we've ever gotten to see in the MSNBC clip. The loading bar, right? Like they buffer the clips within the movie. I thought yes. that was happening to, to me. I thought my fucking computer was, buffered, but I kept going back because I noticed it was in your notes. And I'm like, is that? And I kept going, and it is. The buffering it's bar the is baked into the goddamn movie. It's in the <laughs> yes. movie. It's fucking amazing. <laughs> it loads? It loads in the movie? Yeah. It loads in the movie. <laughs> oh. We watch Mike Lindell do a Windows update in a full <laughs> Oh, man. I said to him tonight. Oh. So- all right, so we cut back to Mike for the for a wrap up, right? And he's standing in a spot where the lighting can't get him. It's so good. Oh, you can hear a PA <laughs> off screen being like left. Yeah. Left. <laughs> You're left. Oh my god. And <laughs> stage left. God damn it. And the, yeah, so and of course during this little outro, he seems to be under the impression that the name of this video is Absolute Proof Times Two. Absolutely. So he says that over and over again. And he's talking about how awful things have gotten to where like you can't say anything. He's like, you know, you can't say anything about vaccines on social media without getting sued for it. I'm like, I can. Weird that you can. He's like, this is where he points out that he has friends who have lost their podcasts over this. I'm like, oh dear. No, that's <laughs> okay. Okay. Now this is serious. Okay. We're having a lot of fun here with Mike Lindell, but let's not just go away taking people's podcasts. All right. <laughs> It matters. <laughs> he's, but he's pitching his social media site that again doesn't work. He tells us it's going to be like YouTube and Twitter combined. <laughs> so, That's the best. <laughs> That's the best crazy, stupid person thing where they take two products that wouldn't be good if they were combined. And they're like, oh, trust me, this is going to be like a car and a latte together. And you're like, why would I want <laughs> It's like a Barnes and Noble and a hi-fi system all <laughs> smashed together once. And he says it'll be the most safe and secure website ever. And I'm like, hey, guys are doing a bang up job so far. <laughs> OK, I will have you know that I just checked and FrankSpeech.com now has all of the social media logos on it. OK, oh, twice. Fuck, you can. Yeah. You can share frankspeech.com on Reddit <laughs> or on LinkedIn. I don't think you can, actually. <laughs> Social media out. proof times two. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Yeah, and he goes like, it, it, during his little wrap-up here, he goes like, now what you see here tonight is just a small portion of what we have. I was like, we've seen nothing. Right, so if you have anything at all, we have seen less than a small portion of it. <laughs> right. Does he say that he proved that socialism is not just having a cup of coffee and socializing? He does, he does say, that. say that, yes. yes. Yep. What? <laughs> <laughs> Which is terrifying. That's true, but you didn't prove it. But that's terrifying because that implies that his audience was against it when they thought it was just a couple of confidence. <laughs> I don't want to make small talk about my kids' hobbies. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Bernie Sanders trying to give me a scone, juice scone. <laughs> <laughs> and then he repeats that sad little fantasy that he's going to go to the Supreme Court. And they're going to all agree with Mike Pillow nine to nothing. And then Donald Trump will get to be president and everyone will come together and there won't be any trans or gay people. We'll stop killing the babies. It'll be great. Oh, and you're going to share this movie just as soon as I can upload it to my WordPress site. <laughs> <sighs> and then, of course, because it is Republican masturbation material, he has to end on the obligatory Ronald Reagan quote about, well, the Ronald Reagan paraphrase about how America was the most important country. And you know what? He was right. <laughs> <laughs> the Reagan quote said, this is the last stand on Earth. And I'm like, was it, though? Because that was a long time ago. Yeah. About a different thing. How did the Vietnam War go, Ronald Reagan, thing you're talking about? <laughs> so, no. Um, Wouldn't have been Vietnam. No. 
And so that, and, and then of course, Flag, Eagle, Mount Rushmore, Lincoln <laughs> Memorial. <laughs> it might as well end with Ben Shapiro buying wood at Home Depot as the patriotic clothes. <laughs> the end. Oh. All right. So one thing that we definitely learned within this film is that Mike Lindell has more docu movies in mind. So. And the other thing we learned, of course, is that he's going to need some help in the title department. Uh, any thoughts on what he could call his next movie? Oh, uh, Absolute Infinity times Infinity. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. Absolute Googleplex, Absolute Zero Kelvin Infinity. Yeah, <laughs> nice. All right. Well, that's going to do it. Subtext, a- subtitle, all the proving my whole thing about <laughs> yeah, blurred right. out farts, stolen the grape election missiles, 360p. Yeah. It was the best of times. It was the worst. Of times. <laughs> All right. Well, that's well, that's going to do it for our review of absolute interference is what I think they landed on. That's not going to do it for the episode just yet, because we still need to talk ourselves into doing this again next week. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. Well, Noah, you will once again be gone for oral surgery, which means it's time for Heath and I to fulfill the promise we made just a week ago to watch the 1990s near death experience horror movie tacular that is. Flatliners. I remember loving that movie when I saw it in theaters. So <laughs> perhaps it's best that it remains unsullied in my mind. And with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 297 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving us a five-star review wherever you're allowed to do that and share the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Skinny Idiot, Citation Data, D&D Minus, and The Skeptic Rat, available wherever podcasts live. If if you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email God off movies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robinson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick. We will dress on Mars. All of the music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a strong life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm Lolo Lucius, wishing that I had let somebody else do the outro this week. Until then, we'll leave you with a Breakfast Club close. Mike Lindell and Michael Flynn both went on to Never finish a sentence. (laughs) Noah's Facebook ads went on to be fucking hilarious for today. (laughs) Absolute Proof 3 was just Mike Lindell loudly farting while running a purple crayon back and forth across a map from China (laughs) to the United States for 120 minutes. He did a 48 hour thon. <laughs> there was crack involved. Oh, yeah. I, you can't do literally anything without crack for 48 I've hours. I've never done anything with the thon suffix <laughs> without crack. Yeah. <laughs> That's a true statement. It's, it's uh, all thons are crack. I've thons. also never done crack, but it's still a true statement. Right. Yeah. Exactly. I've seen <laughs> yeah. The same thing. All right. Interstitial two. I could run a marathon on crack. Nope. Patreon. Yep. (laughs) (laughs) The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2021. All rights reserved.